I had goosebumps almost that entire track. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Molly and in this video I am going to be listening to the album 10,000 Days from the band Tool. So I've been doing a little album reaction series to Tool here on my channel and so far I'm really digging their stuff. I've heard their first three albums, so Undertow, Anima, and Lateralis. All three are definitely a little bit different. They kind of have a very unique tone to them. So I'm really excited to dive now into 10,000 Days, their fourth studio album that they released in 2006, and just see what direction Tool is going to take their sound in on this one. All right, so starting things off on 10,000 Days, we have track one, which is called Vicarious. <laughs> nice. That was a really, really smooth start to that track. Maynard James Keenan's voice sounds a little bit different on this first track. I don't know, it almost has like a slightly more raspy quality to it. I do have to say, Tool just has such a signature sound. There's a very distinct tone to their music. So they're layering it up, they're slowly adding in all of these different elements. There's some really cool vocal effects going on at this part. Almost like they've created some distortion on them and made it almost sound a little bit echoey. And now there's some really subtle atmospheric talking in the background, along with these chimes. Here come the goosebumps. I can just feel all of this tension building up. That was track one, Vicarious. And yet again, I am reminded by why Tool is so good at what they do. That was just such a really like richly well-developed track. Tool just really knows when to pull back and keep their music reined in and a little bit more on the subtle side. And then they just always build their songs up fantastically. They have a really deft way of balancing the restraint with the intensity and it's just fantastic. It's a great recipe that they've concocted and they they do it so well through their music. Okay, moving on to track two, we have Jambi. Right off the bat, this track has like a really chunky sound to it. Like it sounds really heavy. Whereas the previous track, Vicarious, had a lighter, more streamlined sound to it. Again, they're using some vocal distortion on this one. Yeah, there's like a sludginess to this one. It's so much heavier than that first track. There was just a really noticeable tonal shift there. See, now this track sounds more like the first one. It's a little bit lighter. Out 
That was track two, Jambi. Fantastic tone on that one, and it started off really different from that first track, just with that heavier, deeper sound almost. I love how, too, sonically that track lined up with the lyrics. He was talking about rising above a darkness, like being in a dark place, kind of having something pull him out of that. And the track did that there toward the end. It became a lot lighter sounding, which I thought was really, really cool how they did that. Okay, moving on to track three now we have Wings for Marie Part 1. There's this really cool kind of electronic sound that's like going back and forth in my headphones. It's like it's bouncing from one ear to the other. I have goosebumps again. I don't even know why. There's just a certain tone this track has that I really like. There's something very somber about it, but it's also filled with this energy that's just simmering right below the surface. That was track three, Wings for Marie part one. I had goosebumps almost that entire track. It just built up so intricately and so slowly, especially toward the end there. I was just like completely entranced by the sound of that song. Lyrically too, that one was really somber almost. It almost sounded like he was apologizing to someone or talking about maybe letting someone go. All right, moving along now to track four we have the title track 10,000 days and then in parentheses it's wings part two so I'm wondering if it's going to be like a follow-up to that previous track it almost sounds like thunder that noise that they're injecting in here from time to time And now it sounds like rain. There's like this really stormy atmosphere that they're creating with this song. He's talking about a congregation spewing sympathy. I don't know, there's something about this album so far thematically that reminds me of like all the events surrounding the death of someone. He's definitely doing some interesting things with his vocals on this one. There's something about this album so far anyway. He's kind of keeping his vocals a little bit more restrained and just more subtle. Like I said, they're kind of blending into the instrumentation more. I love that I just made that point and now his lyrics are kind of bringing a little bit more of a powerful, like aggressive delivery to him. I like the way his vocal just came in there. It was really subtle in the background and then it just slowly grew clearer. Judith Marie? That's gotta be someone significant to his life. Maybe that's the person he's singing about across this album. These are some of the lyrics that were on that last track, Wings for Marie. almost sounded there at the end like it was birds taking flight. It's interesting too that that track started with 
like a thunderstorm. And then at the end, it was like after the storm, the birds and the life have kind of come back. But that was track four, the title track, 10,000 Days. From start to finish, just all of the little nuances and sounds that they were injecting on there were amazing. They all worked really, really well together. I'm actually really enjoying how like pulled in he's keeping his voice for the most part on this album. It's giving this whole album a really almost somber tone. That's like the best way I can describe it. All right, so moving on now to track five, we have The Pot. Who are you to wave your finger? His voice sounds really different on this one. It's a lot higher. Some funky sounds going on in the background. This is the first track on this album that is really reminiscent of their earlier stuff, like specifically Undertow, their first album. It's way more explosive, more punchy with its sound, and his vocals on this one are like really clear and louder almost. Yeah, the delivery of this song is so explosive. It's definitely bringing the energy to this album. Track five, The Pot. That was a definite tone change on this album. A lot more aggressive and in your face and just like louder overall with its sound. The instrumentals just had this great punchiness to them and his vocals too were really strong and clear. But moving on now to track six, we have Le Pan Conjuring. This is an interesting one. It just sounds like some chanting, some vocalizations. Well, that was kind of a strange little track, almost just like an interlude of sorts. That was track six, Le Pan Conjuring. Just some vocalizations, like a chant almost, just like a little minute long break on this album. But I'm just gonna move on now to track seven called Lost Keys Blame Hoffman. Man, there's a fantastic atmospheric tone to this one. I love the tone of these electric guitars too. They've got this amazing fuzziness to them, almost like a futuristic tone. More of a situation. A gentleman is in here. What's happened? Tell me everything. All right, I'm gonna pause it real fast. That was track seven, Lost Keys, Blame Hoffman. Another kind of like interlude style one, more atmospheric, mostly just instrumental, except for that little end bit where it sounded like a conversation between like two doctors maybe about a patient. Something kind of ominous and dark about the tone of that track. It kind of sounded like it could fit right in in a movie soundtrack or something. And it just kind of went right into the beginning of the next track. So I'm just gonna keep listening to track eight, which is Rosetta Stoned. I don't know what exactly I was expecting, but it wasn't this. Ooh, I think we got some synths going on here. Something about orange slices and spooning. <laughs> the 
this track is really reminding me of Anima. It's very experimental with its sound, with all of this distortion. There's some like electronic stuff they're fusing on. There's kind of more of an ambient nature to it as well. ever be coming down. There's an interesting arc on this album so far. I feel like the first four tracks were kind of in the dark depths of despair almost. And then on track five, the pot, he's talking about being so high. It's almost like tracks five through this one so far anyway, Rosetta Stoned, he's kind of on this high. And that's why it's the, there's been a big tonal change. It's more aggressive. It's more strong sounding. Maybe because thematically he's on that high and that's why it sounds different. Some of these lyrics on this track are just very peculiar. I guess that's the musings of someone who is stoned. Got some really interesting percussion here at the end. And then this distortion too is an interesting pairing with the really natural sounding percussion. That was track eight, Rosetta Stoned. I really enjoyed how atmospheric that one was, and they were playing around with a lot of different sounds on that one with the distortion. I do find it really interesting though, how they're playing around with the vocals a lot. Like on this album, his vocals are just so restrained. There's kind of like a fuzziness to them. Like they're fading into the background more. And then the instrumentals have this really clear, more in your face sound. And they're kind of changing up the dynamic on that a bit. It, which is cool. Moving on to track nine now, we have Intention. I always love that percussion when they introduce that. That sound is kind of reminiscent of wind chimes a little bit to me. I really like how really natural that percussion sounded and then this tone comes in and it's so clean and, and modern, kind of futuristic. It's like a pairing of opposites that I find works really effectively. I like the tone of the two paired together. That was track nine, Intention. That was a very subtle song. They kept it pretty minimalistic. I really enjoyed the percussive elements on that one. And then later on toward the end of that track, it switched over almost to a more, almost like futuristic sound. They were fusing some really subtle electronic stuff on there too, which I thought was cool. It was almost reminiscent of the come down after the craziness of Rosetta Stoned, which was just more impactful and punchy with its delivery and pretty crazy lyrically too. All right, moving on now to track 10, we have Right In Two. The instrumentation on this track, at least here at the start, is really unique. With that guitar, there's a really cool, like, plucky sound that it's got. Some really interesting sound effects going on with this one. really love the guitar tone across this album. There's this great fuzziness to them.
Oh yeah, here we go. And then it's like the song just broke out of that amazing atmospheric part. And now it's just bringing all this intensity. definitely a theme of duality like kind of going back and forth between these two states of being That was track 10, right in two. That song right there is the perfect encapsulation of what I love about Tool. So extremely subtle at times, but so intense also. They layer their songs so effectively that it, it builds up slowly and you don't even really realize that like this wave of instrumentation is coming until it hits you. And I liked too all of the sounds they were using utilizing like especially with his vocals they sounded so ambient at times and they were still utilizing that distortion too so moving on to the last song on 10,000 days we have track 11 which is Viginti Trace I don't really know what this sound is It's kind of reminded me of negative ions off of Anima. It's got a similar sound to it. All right, it's starting to build up. Some really deep distorted vocals here. That was track 11, Viginti Trace, the final track on 10,000 Days. Kind of unsettling almost in a weird way and just really ominous and dark with its sound. And then that vocalization toward the end, just those really deep, low, distorted vocals, almost like a sort of chanting sound, but like a really threatening sounding chanting. <laughs> Well, that is going to conclude my reaction to 10,000 Days, the fourth studio album from the band Tool. So richly layered and nuanced. I absolutely love what Tool does with just building up their sound on every track. And I would say overall, this album is a great fusion of kind of what they did on Anima with more of the experimentation and the atmospheric stuff, but they merged it with kind of the more natural sound of Lateralis. It's kind of a great blend of those two. And then there were some little moments on 10,000 Days that reminded me of Undertow as well. So it was a great fusion of all of the sounds that they utilized on their first three albums. I think upon first listen, my favorite tracks on 10,000 Days would have to be the first one, Vicarious. I also loved track 10, Right in Two, how it was so restrained and then they brought that punchiness toward the end. And kind of a surprising favorite, but I think think right now my favorite track might be Wings for Marie part one. Probably the most restrained song on this whole album, very pulled in, but I almost weirdly prefer Tool when they bring the subtlety. I think it just makes their music oddly that much more powerful. But yeah, I am really enjoying my Tool journey so far. I have one full length studio album from Tool left to do a reaction to, which is Fear Inoculum. I'm really excited to hear that. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for that. And as usual, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.